two. Yo. Let me present El Screeno. So now that Hotel Story is launched, it's kind of back to the grind, getting Earthbound uh, Grand Prix Part 2 ready. So I'm just throwing over these... Uh, Uh, this it's this giant feasting scene and I have yeah is it they should maybe be here I draw them in no they're after him okay cool so that's the lady I have to draw her it's like the continuity is a headache because there's 18 people at the table. But just going for it. Peter Orchard, what's up? Richard Cahill, what's up? How's it going, everyone? Just kind of hanging. This is one of those streams where if I go live, it can help me be productive because I'm kind of easily distracted because uh, the dopamine from the hotel story launch. So I'm like, I almost should turn off Twitter, but then I, it's good to, you know, got to promote hotel story a little bit too. Um, Amelia ended up looking pretty good in this panel. Um, so yeah, this lady, I got to draw her here in a side view. So I'm kind of just looking. She's like, kind of like Xena warrior princess <laughs> a little bit. She's like a little more cartoony. If this was ever a movie, it would have so many puppets. Almost everyone would be puppets, except for like. I don't know if that's. She's not the focus of this panel, so it might be acceptable. I want to keep the appeal. So like you can see like that actually has good appeal, but it's kind of a weird, you know, she looks like a puppet, which that's that's okay. Yeah, I might that might be sufficient. Can you draw her Xena boobies? She's kinda what should she be doing? She can be holding a little wine glass. I don't want the background to have tangents with the foreground foreground is more important i might shrink these lines to be thinner eventually but these lines are all pretty thin um if i just draw her with less detail that kind of look works okay then there's some like there was a dude next to her, another puppet I drew. This guy. Look at this guy. What is his deal? But he's like this. We'll just see him just a little bit. Everyone's kind of munching and crunching on dinner. The details don't matter too much as I get back here into the it's more just like, you know. Silverware from the table, some, some stuff like that. And here, the sketch I drew him here. Sure, that, that's fine. Got another back. So many characters in every freaking panel. Nine people, what's up? Narnar, what's up? Richard Kale, meet the Feebles. Totally. I I just love early Peter Jackson. Hotel Story is like very heavily influenced by that. And then even Earthbound is heavily influenced by more, more Meet the Feebles than Dead Alive. And then his other, because it's kind of a trilogy that I think of as his three first movies. And then Bad Taste, that was his first. 
that one is possibly the most inspirational movie of all time because it is kind like to an outsider it is like bad like it's bad not the greatest audio kind of bad acting but once you get into it then you love it and you'll actually watch the whole thing and it doesn't have like character arcs or anything like that like this the script is not necessarily that good so you're like well what does it have well it actually it's one of those ones i talked about it's a gag movie where it has ideas on screen every second every shot is an idea and, and it's non-stop through the whole movie um it's, it's kind of one super long action scene but all the action is fun goofy gory and it just goes on for two hours and it does have some ebbs and flows that that work really well that like it would make a great comic i think you could uh, adapt it almost directly is that the one with the blue jean aliens i think so i think so keith Moring would help to do an overhead sketch and place your cameras just for your own reference if you haven't already oh for the layouts of the table I have, but then what was funny is as I was drawing it, little things come up, so I was adjusting it, and then I didn't draw it for two weeks, so I was like, all right, has this been adjusted yet or not? But I, I spent a lot of this morning figuring that out, so I think now with – I do have to, like, check the art and stuff, but because I kind of – I quit checking the overhead sketch I did because it got changed a handful of times, but I could – I should update it, I guess. Um. Yeah. So this guy, he looks like it's actually Caperno from the from the Narwhal Shorts campaign. I gotta find where he is. There might not be a page. That's him here. He's got like a big coat. He's got kind of like the the um what's it called? What's the from software game? Uh what is it called? Crap. Debt starts with the I don't know. There's Demon Souls and then there's I'm gonna Google it. Because so it annoys me when I can't think of shit when I see it in my head. From software games. Demon Souls. Dark Souls. Bloodborne. That's what it is. He's got the Bloodborne coat and hat. It's like the, the Grand Prix is kind of like, it's actually influenced by Tekken. If you guys know that PlayStation 1 fighting game. It has, Tekken's cool because they all have stories that they bring, backstories, and, and they're all almost randomly different because they're from like different dimensions. They're from different cultures, different worlds. Um, and so... It is like a grab bag of every design should be kind of fun. So this guy's like the Bloodborne guy. But he he is he does appear in um the shorts compendium. And I want to have him actually because he's gonna be a guy who is lives for a really long time for some reason, like a curse or whatever, which I haven't really figured out yet, but that's what kind of what I want his deal to be. And um, because he's in two stories in the shorts compendium, one is the sci-fi one and one is the one where he drinks pickle juice. And then I have a short written where he hangs out with naked samurai and they go crab hunting together. But I never I actually didn't finish that one. And the, the only problem with that one is it's pretty fun. But I was like, I don't know if I want to draw like <clears throat> 12 pages of two guys hunting crab. <laughs> it's just like. I don't know. I don't care enough. And I've got, whenever you feel that, it's like the audience probably would feel the same way. I could give him a beard, nah. 
he looks I gotta make he looks whiz kid esque. Um but I gotta make sure he has the bigger honking nose and I gotta he's gonna have like light brown hair, so that'll definitely help separate him. And then who's next to him is there he is, he's there. Let me see here. Yeah, it's just the one of the sort of main bad guys. Has anyone in the chat read uh, Grand Prix Part One yet? You know, it's something kind of random, but I think I have two characters with suspenders. <laughs> like I'm okay with that Could try and make this. I draw some nips on this guy. I think I want him to have earrings too. He's like a pirate. Okay. These guys can actually be shrunk a little bit. Be far away. This is the cheating that digital and then when I go back I've been messing with traditional and it's like digital art spoils you so much and you know what that was maybe even like unnecessary you know what it kind of it's funny it sort of depends on the the angle of the lens too, like that'll determine how how fast things get smaller. You have the, the servants drawing random servants here and there. And then I think let me look where the there's two giant cyclopses. I might look at the the big opening spread for the reference. Yeah, so there's these two big pink shapes and they're on each side here. Here's the table that everyone's eating at later in the distance. Um so that means the dude is like right here actually. Dude. Yeah, and you'll see it's kind of crazy like be because this is such a big feasting scene. When I, like that's the background. It's like the table kind of in perspective. This is a wider angle, I think. And then, which that means you're kind of right there. You're right there with them. If it's a longer angle, it's kind of like you're far away zooming in. Uh, there's the sketch. But maybe I'll even 
show this now. So then the next step is you throw a kind of dark gray behind everything. And that, that's a fun step because then it does kind of help. So you select everything, then I deselect the negative space. I'm getting most of it here. And I'll have to come back in and mess with it too, but I don't close all the gaps. Yeah. Then let me go in and close these. What is the, where's the opening there? Son of the gun. To using this. Oh, there it is. It's funny, spotting it is like. I guess killing one. Got to watch the area scaling, though, because that kind of messes with shit if you. Keith, if you're still here, how's your comic project going? You have the, it's like the alien car one. I remember seeing the art for it. It's always looking pretty sweet. Son of the gun. What's going on here? Maybe we get a little of this guy's negative space in there. Not Anthony Gonzalez Clark. What's up, man? What's up, Zed? Hey, I was thinking about my this is Zed. I was thinking about my dumb pitch from before. Have humanity find a crash there like Mac can try to replicate. The tech, but we don't have it quite figured out, so only women can interface. And they run hot, so the flight suit is basically sci fi lingerie, plus the best mechanics are in demand. So this Chad has a harem of babe pilots. I mean, that's sweet. I mean, do you want to do that? Or, I mean, if you want to give it to me, I'd put it in my back pocket. I can't guarantee I would get it, get to it anytime soon. I think it's worth pursuing, though. I think that's a good pitch. Like, you should take it. Uh, Peter Orchard, are your other books available as add-ons? I've been broke this past year, but I'm looking forward to the day I can check out all of your work. Yeah, thanks, Peter. Um, not on this campaign, but I, I'm going to open an eBay store soon with everything available for catching up. Uh, let's, maybe we'll take a quick... Oh, nice. We got a few few backers. Is that anyone in the chat? Then give a holler. Uh, I'll say, a gracias. Let me see. So, I watched the trailer earlier, so then it goes to this. I guess you can go like that. Um, if we update it. Oh, so close. We're one backer from 7 Thou. That sometimes it's the mysterious, uh, there's a backer. I think he does it for other campaigns too. And and I've, I have like messaged him and been like, hey, because I think once he backed several times, but never picked a reward, but he would always back whenever it gets close to a kind of big number. So he's like the OCD backer. So he would come in in this case and he would back $31. And it would put it right at 7,000, but then he wouldn't pick a reward. So he's just like giving the money to put it at 7,000. But then he did that like five times on one campaign for me. And I'm pretty sure he does it for other campaigns too. It's really funny. It's like this legendary 
mysterious backer. But that when he, that time he did it five times for me, I did email him. I'm like, you didn't pick a reward. Did you want to pick something? And I never heard back from him. He disappeared like a wisp in the wind. Zed says, I don't know how to write or draw. <laughs> yeah, the thing I like about that idea, though, Zed, is it does feel like the ultimate sellout comic, which I like. Like, I want to do that. I want to do the ultimate sellout comic. Like, just what could be the the thing that you're just trying to make something that sells a lot? Um, and uh, that, that could definitely sell a lot. That's fun. Caleb says, I'm still waiting for a late night narwhal bully before I'm back. Ha! <laughs> That's funny. We can we can arrange that. KL says that might be a good idea for a superhero. It's almost like that for uh what we have going on. Yeah. Oh, so close. But yeah. Um, hotel story. I'm super excited about it. I, it's I've been saying like, it's funny, I'm working on Grand Prix and you tend to like the latest stuff you like and I don't wanna, you know, it is hard to choose babies or whatever. Cause like I like Cerberus or love it a lot too. And I can't wait for Cerberus to be done. Like part two is, is gonna really solidify it as a classic, I think. Um, but Grand Prix, I uh, really like it, but it's just in the beginning stages of the story. You know, I'm only 48 pages released so far. And then oh, there's some noise outside. Hopefully it's not too annoying. It's like someone's sawing. Um, but yeah, what was I saying? Grand Prix. But what's fun about Hotel Story is it's like completely written. Grand Prix is actually completely written too, but. So I can really imagine how it's going to be. It's going to be so cool. But Hotel Story is completely written and the whole first part is drawn. And the whole first part is like very self-contained and awesome. And it's it's like done. So like I, I've already sent it to a few people to read, trying to get some quotes for the back cover or whatever. Um, and then, yeah, I, I just can't wait to release it. I think people will like it a lot. Richie Cyberduke. Narwhal tried to cover my feet in peanut butter, shaking my head. <laughs> uh, yeah, so what? It's lazy. We're getting rid of this negative space. Yes, that probably looks okay. Oops. Got right here. Uh, let me put it on. Something I'm realizing too is if I rush, that can be like more mentally draining than if I deliberately chill, which I need to remind myself because I was just going kind of fast there. I don't know why that's the case, but. Uh, Okay. And then this, that's meant to be the sumo. And I gave him some tattoos. But I did give him, he's balding, so I got to make sure that's there.
sumo guy, I don't think anything happens to him. So some of the characters, because there's like, you, you, you can't do stuff to every character because it would just be too much. Some of them are just background characters. And then there is like some events where there's lots of deaths and I'll probably just have them die. That's the thing where if you focus on them when kind of like when you sh shouldn't and, and then the story is meandering for no reason and not giving them anything to do once the audience becomes aware of them and they just exist for no reason, the audience will hate them. There's a gap in there somewhere. Where's the gap? Let's play spot the gap. Son of Zigun. Could it be there? Sometimes you can't see it because it's these are vector lines, so it could be there. Oh, that wasn't it. Oh, this is like gotta take a deep breath and chill. Gotta take a sip of coffee. Where's the cap? The hair next to our Bancroft spotted it. Oh. He did. She's looking right at it. She was trying to tell us. Bancroft, you got the eye for these things. I'm sure, uh, Bancroft, do you use the the magic wand tool and the fill tool for flats like, like I do? Because that's funny. You're experienced. So... Oh, look at that. Ooh. There are things filling up here. This guy. And that guy looks like he should have. Okay, we're on the right layer. For this scene, it's got, there's a girl under the table. So it's got kind of a subplot beneath the table. And this one guy has a toe ring and she's about to, Steal his toe ring or attempt to. But then he caught this panel is him crossing his legs under the table. And actually, speaking of continuity, this is the person sitting next to this person. This, it looks like I thought it was a woman, so I drew kind of a feminine leg. You can kind of barely see, but. Um, I'll fix that now so I don't have to fix it later. It's a it's the main bad guy sniper guy. He's like he's like the shadow of Wizkid. You know a lot of video games do that where you have like the shadow version. Grand Prix kind of does that. Except the dude he doesn't like look like Wizkid, but he's like a sniper too and blah blah blah. Where are we going? That probably is okay. Yeah, I think that'll work. This one looked like it kind of did work out. Are they? No, that is. The tables here. This actually would get filled up too. little perspective thing like so this is exaggerated but even exaggerated it looks pretty good but so picture 
a cup, I guess, you know. So this is a cup right here, down here in the corner. And because it's at the bottom, and this is a wide angle, that means we're looking down at it. And like for a wide angle, we're kind of looking straight at something that's right in the middle. So there's that cup, you know, it's very shallow. You can see only a little bit into it. This one's lower so we can see more into it. Same with this bowl here, we can see more into it. And now like it's, I think if I really tried to match it, it's like the cup maybe wouldn't be that quite that accent, accented, but it kind of looks cool. So I'm gonna leave it. Then what happened here? Oh yeah, take this off and this. Yeah, so that's kind of what, after drawing the characters, throwing in the background grays, then I got to color it and then do some atmospheric type stuff if it's necessary and then um, letter it and then you go on to the next page. <clears throat> but I, gotta, I still have to draw one whole um, one whole thing here. So here's the guy. I kind of had him, he has like a, oh shit. I kind of gave him a robe here and crossing your legs with a robe is like ridiculous. I'll try to draw it, Let's see what happens. Toe, toe up here. His, that's his ring toe right there. And the ring is so kind of small, so I'd, I'd probably give it a color hold or even a glow effect. It's one of the special rings. So. There's his little panty shot. That would be like white of his panties right there. Assuming it's a he, it's like an alien, I think. So maybe that's, it's the girl recoiling from getting full frontal panty shot. Too much, too much, I don't know. I think it might be okay. Cool team, looks brilliant. Thanks, cool team. What's up, Crystal? Bancroft says, yes, when I can. Yeah, because it's, it, you can't always do it if it's, uh, if you have gaps in your line work. That's something I noticed with, if I draw traditionally, I have tons of gaps and it looks great. Gaps can create the illusion of an extra thin line too. So it, for that's like an inking trick is like, you can get the illusion of a thin line without having to grab a tiny, um, in fact, maybe you could do a little mini demonstration. Like if you have to ink. So I, I started doing it with my traditional inking I don't do it for this because this is like an animation style. It's supposed to look like cells. So they do, I do close the shapes, but I don't know if it's like, I'll try like that kind of nose. Yoink, yoink. I'm not sort of already doing it. Right here. <laughs> this can be sort of like Amelia, I guess. She has a little more. So then if that is the pencils, then to ink it. Like even, I can use a different, I'll use this one, which doesn't get thinner really. Then it's like, yeah, like you, you only,
you're only like inking like sections of it. something like that I will do her actually the hair is actually a time when you can really then if you turn it off then it looks like pretty minimalist but back in Like a totally different style, kind of, but then, yeah, you can't do the select thing, so you just whatever that's fine, though. Gone forever. This, however, save. So, this is just not very rough, but so this is the girl kind of recoiling. And disgust from the full funnel panty shot of the alien. <laughs> I don't know. So here's the thing that adds. That's funny. That little drawing I just did is kind of funny. The it kind of works, but that adds a whole like it's kind of like what it's like mixing metaphors for the storytelling because the story is that she was gonna get the ring, but then he crossed his legs before she could grab it, and he, she almost like you know did like made him made him aware of her presence. That's the story. But then if the story is he crossed his legs. Maybe there, there could be a second beat, but it would need another panel. So I think what I might end up doing actually, because it's like kind of a distraction, that little gag that, shit, she got full frontal uh, panty shot from the alien. It's a distraction from the fact that she almost got the ring, but then he crossed his leg, I think. So one way to fix that is, if I just have him wearing like yoga pants, maybe he'd be wearing yoga pants. That that doesn't change that much lines here. This is yoga pants. Yeah. We'll leave it like that for now. I can sort of leave maybe her, well, her expression actually, yeah, it would change. So like, I'll save this on another layer though, just in case. So the expression of actual, like, like oh shit, he moved right when I was about to grab the ring, he moved. His mouth closed, eyes wide. I gave her, she has like a really cartoony face, so maybe something like that kind of works.
And then her hand is like, whoa. See, like that. She's like, whoa, dodged him just in time. And then the question is, where's this other hand go? Like that? Or maybe back, kind of? That is better, so I will delete. So we can just look though, like, see, so look at that. That's her like, oh snap, he moved before I could touch it. That's like, oh, he gave me a gross alien panty shot when he crossed his legs. <laughs> so we'll go like that, we'll do that one. Delete this one, gone forever. Her arm does look a little long and gangly here. I can, again, with the digital trickery, Let's control V, drag it around, frick. Why is that letting me drag? Did I do something? Did I lock it? Okay. Yeah, like that. But I've noticed when I try to, if I'm drawing traditional and like I would have liked to have moved her gangly arm back, and I draw gangly arms anyway, so then it's like doubly gangly. But um, sometimes it's traditional, it is kind of fun to be like, F it, learn to love it. Learn to love her extra gangly arm. It's maybe technically a mistake, but you never see me admit it. You're playing chicken with the audience. <laughs> Grand Prix has Shadow Realm. A sh Shadow Realm is a cool trope. It'd be cool to do a story specifically around that. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Hello. Cool. I think that's. Can't remember if she has like a hair thing there, or if it's just a parting of her hair. Like some goes this way, some goes this way. That's actually funny. That pose for some reason is funny. Her hand there kind of on her hip. Whoop. Ding, ding, ding. Cool. I don't know. Yeah, I like that, I guess. And then there's a wood block here. So this foot has actually cut off. And then I got to draw Come on. What am I doing? Dun, dun. The dude dude's leg in the background. It's the last thing. I'll do them on a separate layer just for a little bit of.
be smaller than that, guys. And I want the legs not cramping her too much. Like she has a fair amount of space under there. Kind of hard getting the foot to feel like it's touching the ground. Like that sort of feels like it. If you picture the oval on the ground, that's kind of. I'd almost want this a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, honestly, that. Something like that. Make it a little bigger, but drag it back like that. And there's just, yeah, that will do. Now, I made it bigger so he's a little thicker, and he's behind her, so he should be thinner, so I will thin those lines. A fair amount, especially around these. That actually looks fine there. Bring this layer below, add one overlapping there. Cool. Then we'll see, we gotta add one more. Two, three, four, five. Cool. Richie Cyber Dupe. I need a narwhal book. Richie, are you are you uh in the US? Is that sometimes an issue if why people sleep on Narwhal a little bit is because they're, they're like, oh, I'll get around to it, but the shipping is just expensive. So you, it takes extra kind of motivation to pump yourself up. And some people say they're waiting to get multiple books at once to kind of save on shipping. So that's a thing. It's like, you know, there's like waiting for the trade. This exists like in crowdfunding, I've noticed. And it, I mean, it's kind of cool. But yeah, there's waiting for the trade people. Then there's waiting for multiple trades to save on shipping. Um, yeah, that kind of stuff. But, oh, your UK. Yeah, UK is a little bit uh, little bit steep. For this campaign, if you get the all three campaign, it's like a hundred bucks maybe, and you get, you know, and I don't know if you have this, the, the secret link to get the mini comic. The mini comic's like nothing special, but then technically you would get four comics. Uh, if you include the mini comic for and the making of the Obel and hotel story and it total over like 200 pages and uh, that would still be worth it. Hopefully, you know, that's one option. We're getting, getting a few sales though. Let's, let's update it and see what's up. I think we're almost at 120 backers. One, yeah, 118. Um, Seventh hour, we cracked. Okay, see that? M many thanks. Many thanks, everyone. Hotel Stowe. Um, 
I'm there's only nine people watching. I might show you guys the first. I've been it's 120 pages. The first eight pages is kind of a great intro. And then there's one little half scene after that that has no dialogue that I usually share too. So it's like 13 pages or something. Um I wondered I might have closed it. Hold on. Clip studio. Thanks. Yeah, let's. We'll. I'll read you guys the first eight pages. Some of you might have already uh, seen seen this, but the first eight pages. Uh, the whole book's sweet, but I am I am kind of proud of the first eight pages. You, you guys might see, but so page one. Excuse me, double queen. Oh, I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit. Well, yeah, right there is fine. Double queen, the raw nerve. I booked a king. Look again. Can you even spell? It's Chuck Huxenbaugh. That happened to me in real life. I was the front desk agent. I'm this guy. I apologize, sir, but this is the only suite available. Where's the manager? Oh, God, please don't tell me you're the manager. Sir, she's on the way. Uh, she's on the way, sir. If you could just have a seat over. Don't tell me the manager is a woman. Shit. And your sanitizer dispenser is empty. That guy's a piece of work. Hick! You think that's all his luggage? Hmm. How'd he board his flight with that much stuff? Aren't there weight limits? I have never. Maybe he drove. Excuse me, pizza coming through. Been treated with such disrespect. Another. Another. Sigh. I'm about to cut you off. I'm not taking that room. Excuse me, coming through. Sir, if you would just, no, if you would just, I will be heard. Hey there, I have a pizza delivery for the penthouse. Penthouse? Of course, top floor. You have to scan this in the elevator to access it. Ding, 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 ding. Excuse me. Yikes. May I see a credit card or ID associated with the reservation? Ding, 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 ding. Bruno Saris, you look quite different. Oh, you used to look quite different. Yes, well, uh, the chemo really did a number on me. I'm sorry. Here's your key card. Thanks. The sheer absurdity. Connie. He turns. What? Hi? Hi. Here for the tourney too? You know it. I got lost on the way up. Found myself here. Classic. Hey, want to bunk together to save money? Might as well throw a room party. See if anyone else here is chill. I don't know. Uh, we'll see if this line ever gets shorter. What's up with you? Why are you drinking so much? I'm n nervous for the networking event tonight. Just don't embarrass yourself. Sniff, it's my one chance. Oh, please. Cough. Thank you for your patience, sir. We value your patronage here at Hotel. Yeah, yeah. Oh, don't tell me you're the manager. Go ahead and upgrade him to the King Corner Room, but that room's already booked. We'll deal with it later. Hello, sir. Warmest apologies. We're upgrading you to a corner room king. No. Well, then. Here's your key for the night, sir. Enjoy. What a waste of my time. Pick it up, bellboy. Then we cut to the pizza guy in the elevator. Shing, creak. Brrr, ding, 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 ding. Ding. Sees the giant door, walks towards it. Knock, knock, knock. Pizza? Ah, right on time. I hope they're not working you too hard tonight. No, my shift's almost over, actually. Hey, do you have time for a... For a what? Oh, you know, would you like to come in for a slice with me? I'm not supposed to get high on my own supply. Nonsense. She pulls him in. The end. The end of preview. So... If that tickles your fancy, the cartooning, the script, the storytelling, the flow, it's got, we, we iterated so hard on the flow. This is another one where the flow, uh, I do, I ask people and I try to build the reputation of a narwhal book is a book you'll want to read in one sitting. That's kind of like the thing, like it's got that narrative drive to it. And that's kind of a structural thing, a storytelling thing, a flow thing. And we hit all those beats on Hotel Story. We we did so much due diligence to get that firing on all cylinders. 
So I do think that will be the case. Keep keep an eye out for that, I guess. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm going to minimize this. So we got this page done. That's good. Now only like freaking five more pages, then a whole nother batch. But this batch, I have some pages to do still, of course. 65, it starts again. So I have to do 61 through 64. So yeah, I'll close this. <clears throat> Sixty-one. Good God. Oh, see, this is funny. Like, this is like a little bit mentally draining. It's you just got to do it. I can do it best in the morning. But it's like, good God, sir. We have so much characters to draw on every freaking panel do, 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 do. there's my scribbles there that's funny i actually know what that is though that's good i've remembered i'm debating to not do this one live so there's an hour stream checking in maybe you know what we might do take a little break and do some <laughs> do some uh tongue twisters now what are they called uh some like some of these logic problems let me see if I can Google it. Or chess problems. I'm just clicking on some links here. Probably not that. There's some logic puzzle. All right, guys, scores. Start a new puzzle. Oh, that's not it. Did I close the window that had the good, the good puzzle stuff? I think I did. I got to refind it. What about this? <laughs> All right, we'll do like one of these. Some of these are like so dumb and they vex me. Oh, this says these are easy. I don't want to do easy ones. I want to do the hard ones. Oh, I think we can scroll down. Easy. Medium. Now we'll go straight to hard. I assume this one's hard. Win or lose. Can you figure out who won the game? The Reds, the Grays, the Blues, and the Blacks have a round robin tournament. Each plays each other team once for a total of six games. Oh, the, oh yeah, this is oh, this is gonna be tough. The Blacks won more games than the Blues. The Grays won more games than the Blues. The Reds tied the Blacks. This was the only tie in the tournament. Who won the game between the Reds and the Blues? What? And it says the answer right there. 
Well, they gave it away. <laughs> See, I'm vexed. It only takes like a little bit of a little bit of pushing me over the edge to get vexed with these stupid ass puzzles. Um it's we went from 8 people watching to 12. That's that's crazy. Are you guys bots? Who here is real? Who here wants to back a hotel story? Also, no pressure, no pressure. No cyberbullying just yet, maybe later. No, but I'm, what's up, Justin Belmont? How's it going, dude? But I'm, I'm thinking about ending the stream here. So, but I might hop on later. I'll try and find the links first and line up a few fun puzzles. And then we'll, because that's the, I've done that two nights in a row now, and it has been kind of fun. And it's chat interaction. It's like kind of a fun live stream thing. And what was I going to say about it too? It's, uh, oh, I'm calling it Straight to the Dome. That's the Narwhal show where we do logic puzzles. Straight to the Dome with Narwhal every night at 8 p.m. I don't know. Um, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. I'm going to end the stream then. So, all right. I'll catch you everyone later. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, check out Hotel Story. I'm sure everyone here ha like has heard me say it too many times already. But in case you're new, check it out. Check out that trailer. All right, see you guys later.